and I went over to our original Neon Tetra spawn and I had a look inside and it turned out that all of those eggs had gone infertile and I actually wasn't expecting to see any eggs but it turned out in our right hand Neon Tetra tub we had like heaps of eggs like probably 80 to 100 eggs I think but I came back on Monday morning to some more good news and most of those eggs had started to hatch now. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Kingfish Simple. So, in today's video, we are gonna be breeding some more Neon Tetras. Now, in our last video, we experimented with a new method of breeding the Neon Tetras that I didn't really get to try and I wanted to experiment with. And I thought we weren't gonna have success with it because we didn't have success on our first spawn. But to my surprise, I came back in the afternoon and I noticed that the pair that we were experimenting with had laid eggs. Now, if you've been in the hobby for a bit, it'd be pretty common knowledge to you that Neon Tetras seem to have a lot of problems with them. Now, a lot of these problems are faced by a lot of hobbyists and this is problems with neon tetra disease and overall just genetic weakness because these guys are producing their millions every year there's some weird number of them is sold like every month it might be like two million of them are sold every month there's a ridiculous amount of these guys sold and when they're produced in such large quantities they're sent all across the world and the problem is with these guys when they get to wholesale facilities they're not really taken care of because they just move so quickly because they're so popular i'm not dissing any wholesalers but neon tetras are generally known to be a little bit of a weaker fish nowadays and what i was using in the last video were some imported fish that probably came from a wholesaler and I used those to create a spawn with. Now, I'm not too sure how viable that spawn was, but there was a decent number of eggs in that spawn and it worked pretty well, but I've just gone to my mate Peter's house, who I've made a video with before, and Peter was previously experimenting with Neon Tetras in his fish room. Now, keep in mind, Peter has a full-time job and he's not nearly into this as much as I am, but he was experimenting with breeding Neon Tetras and he actually has been breeding his own Neon Tetras that he's produced and he's been getting much better results, especially with his amount of eggs that he's getting and the amount of fry that he's getting through. So the other day I had Peter over into this fish room and I showed him some of the stuff that was going on in here and I explained to him about my breeding project and I traded him a male Trilineatus Cory for seven of these beautiful homebred Neon Tetras. Now keep in mind these were some of Peter's first fish that he's ever bred and Peter said that he kept them in a tank that was maybe a little bit too small and two or three of them are stunted but there's four really solid ones in here and it seems like they're two pairs so there's two females and two males and in today's video I'm going to be experimenting with these guys in the tubs that I've been trying to use so I haven't used these tubs yet but these are the Kmart tubs and I was breeding betters in them and in today's video I'm just going to be trying to experiment with getting a spawn and I just want to see whether we get more eggs and I want to compare the fertility with these guys over the imported fish so let me try and explain how this is going to work. So if we come on over to my other room, which is my storage garage, I keep like all my fish food in here. I've got an auto water change system tank back here. And I've also got in this room our Neon Tetra breeding setup. So the reason I've decided to use this garage for a lot of the breeding that I'm gonna be experimenting with with the Tetras is because this garage is generally a lot cooler. So my fish room is about 28 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, which is way too warm to breed any Neon Tetras in. But this storage garage is sitting at about 24 to 23 degrees Celsius, which is the perfect temperature to breed Neon Tetras in. So that's why I've decided to experiment with a lot of these projects and see how many neon tetras we can create. Now, I'm not trying to make any money from this. I'm genuinely just interested to see if I can get some kind of workflow that you guys can copy if you want to make like a tank full of 200 neon tetras. Anyways, if we come on over here, you can see in this container, this is the container that we used in the last episode and we're probably not gonna be able to see too well in here, but there are some eggs in here. None of them have hatched yet, so they're probably gonna hatch in the next couple of days and I'll show you guys when they do eventually hatch. Anyways, back to the method. So. If you come over here, you can see we've got our tubs. So we've got a bunch of them lined up in case we wanna breed a ton of pairs, but today we're only gonna need two tubs. And the idea is that we're gonna have each of these tubs and these tubs are awesome. You can get them from Kmart and they're like four bucks. And the reason they're so good is because you can see the sides are all misted up. And this means that the fish can't see each other through the sides of the tanks. So that means they're not gonna get distracted and they're gonna really focus on breeding with each other. The other thing that's really good is there's this clear front so you can see into the container if there's anything going on. Now, what we're gonna do is a lot of people don't know, but Neon Tetras love to breed in forest and that's where they found in the Amazon and that means that there's tons of tree cover and it also means that the water's kind of cold because it's always shaded and the other thing too is it's really peaty and it's what we'd call black water so we're gonna need to create some kind of black water environment for these guys to breed in successfully and they're very very fussy so what we've got here is our tub and in here we've got some cocoa fiber so in the last episode I tried to use this stuff but I ended up not using it because I thought it was stuffing with my TDS in the water which is just the minerals that are in the water and I think I got that wrong when I was doing 
thing is when I was introducing my pairs, I was introducing a big glass of tank water and I just didn't even think about it and that was what was boosting the TDS in the water. So we're not gonna be doing that today. And then we're gonna be filling this container up with some RO water, which is reverse osmosis water, which is just like basically pure water. And that's gonna be very similar to the Amazon environment. If you don't have a reverse osmosis system, you can get one there like 80 bucks. I'd highly recommend doing that. But if you don't have that, you can just harvest some rainwater and that's gonna work perfectly fine. And then finally, we're gonna add some of this, which is just some black water extract. And Peter gave me this, so thank you so much, Peter. And we're gonna be using this in this tub to get some tannins in it and to make the, the water nice and dark and to bring that pH right down. So what you're gonna want is a TDS anywhere from 40 to 20 parts per million. So very, very low. Even if you can get to zero, that's perfect. And then you're gonna want a pH of about six to 6.5. And you'll want that temperature at about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius, but preferably 22 to 23 degrees Celsius. So let's set these two tubs up and get these fish in here. Okay, so when I came back the following morning, I looked in our tubs expecting to see a ton of eggs everywhere because I thought I did everything right. And to my surprise, of course, I came in and I saw absolutely nothing again. So I was a little bit puzzled and I decided to give the water a bit of a test. So I went ahead and grabbed my TDS pen and that's when I saw my first problem. So both the tubs had a TDS of about 80 which is kind of surprising because I didn't know how they got that TDS. Now, I hadn't added any tap water or anything like that. And the only thing I could think of is that black water extract had some sort of thing that was boosting up that TDS. And a lot of people have been telling me it's the softness of the water, but I kind of beg to differ because I think that they just really want just pure water. So then to test whether this is true, I took all the pairs of neons out. I took the tubs apart and then I refilled them up with some fresh RO water. And I decided to only put some black water extract in one tub. And then I tested the two. And of course the TDS was higher in the one with the black water extract. I then just decided to reintroduce our pairs into tubs without the black water extract and then give it another go. And just to make sure this method was still gonna work, I tested the TDS and we we're at about 20 parts per million. And I also gave it a quick pH test and we were at about 6.5, which is absolutely perfect for these guys. So I then left them overnight to hopefully spawn. I then got slammed with some more bad news that morning and I went over to our original Neon Tetra spawn and I had a look inside and it turned out that all of those eggs had gone infertile. Now, I wasn't too sure why those eggs had gone infertile. I first believed that it was due to a lack of oxygenation for the eggs and the eggs had died that way. But I then looked at my old Neon Tetra series and I saw that I raised the eggs the exact same way. So I thought it couldn't have been that. I then just dismissed it as a lack of infertility from the female. And I came to the conclusion that the female probably had bad row inside of her. Those eggs had been probably sitting in her ovaries for months and months and hadn't been released. And they were probably already foul to begin with. So I just decided to take that down and throw out those eggs. And I was pretty disappointed. I left the fish room that day pretty upset. Anyways, I came back the following morning, and of course this morning was a Saturday, so I'm normally pretty busy on the weekends doing, you know, just normal stuff and living my normal life, and it was pretty hard to record, so I just brought my phone in, and I actually wasn't expecting to see any eggs, but it turned out in our right-hand Neon Tetra tub, we had like heaps of eggs, like probably 80 to 100 eggs, I think. I could be off on that number, I'm not gonna know until we see how many fry we got, but there was a ton of eggs spawned everywhere. Unfortunately, in our left-hand side, that pair hadn't spawned yet, so I decided to just take out the right-hand side's pair and reintroduce them back into their tank and add a few drops of methylene blue to the right-hand tub to make sure that those eggs didn't fungus over. And I just left the pair on the left-hand side for another day to see whether they spawned. Okay, so it's now the afternoon and this morning I came in and I was just in a little bit of a rush. So I went and checked on those Neon Tetra containers and we had one of our pairs spawned. So the other one didn't spawn, but I just left them. So that's really good that we got that spawn because it means that our methods kind of worked. Now, I don't know whether those eggs are gonna be fertilized. I mean, hopefully they're fertilized. I've been looking and I've only seen a few go white and the rest have stayed translucent. So I'm thinking that that means that there's gonna be at least some fertile eggs in there. And I'm really excited to try and get my hands on some of these larva because I'm gonna try and raise them up and get to that stage of the whole breeding process. So that's really good. But a few things have happened since then in the fish room. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is we've gotten another peppermint spawn. So if you come and have a look in this tank, this is our end peppermint bristlenose breeding tank. 
And this has got our second colony of peppermint pristinose that I've got in the fish room. And this male that was in that cave that you can see in the middle of the screen this morning was flirting with a couple of females. And if you come and have a look in this little breeder tumbler thing, you can see in this tumbler we have some eggs. Now I hate this tank down the end of the fish room because it's really dark and it's super glary in here. So excuse the glare, but we've got two batches of eggs here. So I think he's bred with two females. I've seen bristlenose do that before. They can breed with a couple of females and get quite a few clutches of eggs. So this guy's got two of them. And that's really good. And you can see this female's a little bit beaten up. So she was probably the one that bred with him. And yeah, I've just been having a lot of success with these guys. The key to them is keeping a really low pH and a really cool temperature of about 23 degrees. And then just doing a water change weekly. And that normally does the trick triggering them. So the other thing I wanted to show you guys is over in this Epistogramma fire gold breeding tank. In the last episode, you remember that our female and male, I think had a spawn. Now, I'm trying to show you guys this female up the back. You can see her pretty well there. I think she's on top of some wrigglers. So I'm gonna get my big lens out and try and get a close up look. But it looks like she's got quite a big batch of wrigglers there. And that means that she's taking them out and the male's been guarding them and she's been guarding them really, really well from these endler guppies that are in this tank. And I'm really hoping that these guys can get some free swimmers because then we'll strip the free swimmers. You can see there's a bit of flirting going on here. What we'll do is we'll strip those free swimmers. We'll try and feed them baby brunch. We've been raising ourselves. And I've been really desperate to try and get some fry out of them because I've had them for a couple months now and I just haven't had any proper breeding. So, I mean, I've bred epistogrammas in the past, but I haven't bred these guys before and I've been really wanting to take them off my list of fish to breed. So hopefully they don't eat their wrigglers or anything like that. I guess we'll just wait till tomorrow morning and see if that other pair of neon spawns and we'll also find out whether those eggs were fertilized from this morning's spawn. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I then came back the next day and the left hand side pair still hadn't spawned so I just decided to give up on that pair and I reintroduced them back in their tank. However, I was really, really happy to see that the eggs on the right hand side still hadn't fungus over and there was a few of them that had, which is pretty normal because they're not gonna be able to fertilize every single egg, but I did see that lots of those little eggs had embryos inside of them and I was just blown away. I was super, super happy. And of course, this was still the weekend, so I didn't do any major recording, but I came back on Monday morning to some more good news, and most of those eggs had started to hatch. Now, these guys are probably the tiniest fry I've ever seen in my life. They are seriously small, and I could not pick them up with my good camera, especially in these crappy Kmart tubs. I couldn't get a good look at them, so the best look I got was with my phone, and I'm gonna try and find some footage online of someone else's embryos, but, these guys still haven't formed eyes yet as of recording this video and they've pretty much all hashed and they're all over the tub. Now, I'm not too sure how I'm gonna go about raising these guys up. I've got a few ideas that I'm gonna uncover in a future video, but I'm very, very happy to finally have some little neon tetrarugulas in the fish room. And this is something that I've been wanting to try for ages. And this is definitely the easiest way to do it by far at this point in time for me. So anyways, I think that's gonna wrap this video up guys. So thank you so much for watching it. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.